I, I'm going to complete uh, the, the, our workshop about azospermia with the easy task, which is the management of hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. Uh, I have no conflict of interest. Uh, as you have uh, here today, uh, that uh, we have the two major types of azospermia, obstructive and non-obstructive, and uh, hypogonadohypotrophic hypogonadism is one of the causes of non-obstructive azospermia. Uh, in general, it is one of the most medically correctable causes of NOA. It's true that it is a rare in the crime disease, and it's true that it is uncommon in male infertility, affecting only 1 to 2 percent of infertile men, but we can cure this patient just by medication. Uh, commonly, it's idiopathic, and it's mostly related to gene mutation. And uh, some genetic abnormalities are well known, like Kalman syndrome, uh, which is uh, uh, clinically you can detect it easily by asking the patient if he is smelling, can smell or not. Uh, all Kalman syndrome do not differentiate the type of smell. It might be prader willi syndrome or seborrheal ataxia with hypogonadism. Also, it may be isolated LH or isolated FSH deficiency. It also be, can be acquired like hypopituitarism for different reasons like tumor infiltration, trauma, irradiation, ischemia, or surgery, or due to hyperprolactinemia. Uh, and uh, sometimes, and we can see it very frequently now, a day, uh, in young people taking supraphysiological dose of exogenous androgens leading to anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. So, uh, as you all know, the hypothalamus is secreting GnRH and the pituitary is secreting FSH and LH. Both are low in this condition and resulting in low testosterone production and low production of gametes. Clinically, you can easily spot these cases having a small size of testis rather than a large one. And by doing a semen analysis, either it is azospermia or severe oligo. And by making your hormonal assay, you will find that all the three hormones, FSH and LH and testosterone are below normal. So what is the best treatment for this patient? Uh, both pulsatile gonadotropin and combined HCG and human gonadotropin are effective and induce spermatogenesis in this kind of patient. Actually, we don't know which treatment strategy is better because uh, all of these treatments give good results in 50, 75 to 80 percent of patients and giving similar pregnancies. However, pulsatile therapy seems to be the most physiological one uh, because it is a rational choice for subjects with normal pituitary function. However, worldwide it is less used because it is inconvenient administration in ineffectiveness in cases of pan hypopituitarism. And in Egypt is not available, so we don't use this type of treatment at all. What is done generally worldwide and in Egypt is that we start with HCG for a period of six to 12 months just to stimulate testosterone production before adding FSH. HCG uh, can be used at a dose of 1,000 to 3,000 uh, two to three times a week, and this use is tritated to give uh, a eugonadal state. In Egypt, unfortunately, you only have 5,000, but it works pretty well. Uh, one injection per week uh, is, is a good uh, substitute. If we don't reach eugonadal level, we can increase the dose every five days or every four days. Uh, what is nice with this kind of treatment that alone it may help some people in uh, finding sperm without need to add, to add FSH. So while giving this treatment, you have to monitor by doing semen analysis every three to six months. Uh, Bastin uh, advised the use uh, of FSH at a, at a dose of 75 international units, three times a week, but he can titrate up to uh, 75 more units uh, if uh, no response happens. Uh, and he advised it to continue long uh, away uh, his treatment until sperms appear. So prolongation of treatment is necessary to achieve satisfactory outcome. 
And the time of first appearance of sperm is variable. Uh, not all patients uh, uh, give the same reaction, uh, a good response, take uh, variable time. So varying from three to six months up to 36 months. Uh, uh, a, a, a large study that has done by Burgess in 1997, 80% of patients uh, were reporting good response, even in patients in cryptorchidism or subtesticular volume. This patient will increase testicular volume by treatment and will uh, give us sperm. As you can see from this graph, uh, the more you spend time, the more patients uh, can give you sperm and the more count is increased uh, with the time. Uh, this is a patient exhibiting uh, high volume, more than uh, 20 million uh, sperm per ml. The more time you spend, the more uh, sperm you have. So my advice is don't give up before two years of continuous therapy, as most of patients will respond and may even initiate spontaneous conception. You will be surprised in spite of low semen quality, pregnancy may occur in high proportion of cases. This is to show you in, in, in a series of patients having Kalman syndrome that the patient will respond rapidly with a count more than 10 million. Many of them ended in pregnancy in the first three months or six months of treatment, while those having count as low as 100,000 per ml needed a longer period to achieve pregnancies. So very surprising patient having 100 uh, sperm per ml can achieve pregnancy in such population. So these are really good sperm. However, full spermatogenesis in pregnancy is not achievable in all cases, despite prolonged treatment. And patient compliance can be limited with the cost, inconvenience, and discomfort associated with this type of treatment. So, we need to think about patient compliance and how to uh, help the patient to continue the treatment, not to stop it. So we may teach him self-administration subcutaneously. This is well tolerated and effective also. And we can uh, 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 propose uh, an early offer of assisted conception. Uh, so, uh, when we find sperm, we can freeze it and suggest the patient if he doesn't want to continue treatment to go for ICSI directly. Uh, and uh, ICSI is a good option and patients like this option because they are, many of them are elected. Uh, and some patients, uh, in spite of treatment, they want to stop it because they don't see any results. So if we suggest micro TC or just TC in this patient, we have a, a, a retrieval rate of 70% of patients of good spermatozoa. So this is a good uh, results of TC in such patients. Uh, regarding the category of patients receiving anabolic steroid, it is recommended, of course, to stop any exogenous androgen for this kind of men. And the time of recovery is a real variable between these patients. And preferably, we have to give them HCG uh, two to three times per week at a dose of 3,000 inter international unit. Uh, we may add clomiphene citrate because HCG may prevent, uh, uh, may, may do a, a negative feedback. So we need to raise FSH by clomid or by FSH therapy. Uh, and monotherapy with clomid can be an, an, an alternative also, but it's a weak alternative. Uh, regarding uh, hypogradual hypogonadism, uh, clomiphene citrate has been tried. It's inexpensive, but it requires intact pituitary function. Although one small retrospective study has taken its role, it is a possible alternative, but we need more research about the use of clomid in such population. Uh, once pregnancy has achieved, Hypogonadal patients need a lifelong treatment therapy to overcome hypogonadism-related symptoms. So we can prescribe testosterone if no further conception is, at, at, uh, is needed. But alternatively, we may think continuous gonadal treatment therapy or HCG or clomifen uh, if they still desire fertility. Of course, freezing an up sample 
has to be done because if he's going to stop any of this treatment, he may all lose, lose all the sperm he has done after one or two years of treatment.